Hi, this is Kathy Goodwin, and I'm going to be answering some questions today about a topic that's becoming more pro more prominent, the world of online education. Why you, you need this information is that you can waste an awful lot of time if you decide you want to get an advanced degree. Let's say, for example, you're in a field and you want to change careers. You say, okay, I'm going to go back and get a degree. And then you hear about an online program and you think, oh, this is going to be great. I don't have to quit my job. I can go to school and, and I don't have to lose the income and it, it sounds really good. The problem is that sometimes that online option is not going to work for you. It will not ma really make a difference in your career. And sometimes you can make a choice, especially in advanced degree programs that will actually waste your money because you may think you're saving money, but you end up losing a lot more. And I'll talk about that shortly. And it could even backfire. You could even end up worse off because you chose a program that was not respected by companies and in fact may be so disrespectful that you could lose credibility and even your job. That has happened, not a lot, but there was a television show or program uh, quite a while back where a woman had taken an online degree and she was very proud of it. She thought she had a doctorate. She went around calling herself doctor, which, you know, I mean, she did the work, she wrote the thesis, she thought the school was a school, and it turned out it was such a, a bizarre school. The accreditation was in question, the reputation was even even in more question. So she ended up with worse than nothing. So you want to think about any education options because you've got, even if it's purely recreational, the time component. So let's look at the categories. I'm going to divide them into four categories. First, the what I call the university with online options. This means, let's say you're taking a program at Penn State or Gonzaga. In the, I knew someone who went there and did some online courses as well as the regular courses. What this means, we'll look at in just a moment. But it's essentially you're in a, a campus program. You're studying for a degree. It's a traditional program, but you can take some courses uh, online as opposed to in the classroom. And it counts the same towards your degree. Um, universities with entire degrees online, sometimes with residency. Um, the actual University of Maryland has some. They have a very good reputation. Um, some other universities are, you know, good and bad reputation, and we're going to look in a little bit about what that means, um, will offer online degree. That means you could do the entire thing online. Sometimes they require you come on campus for maybe one week, a quarter, or a couple times a year. Then there's something called the MOOCs. So we'll look at those um, in a little more detail. Massive op online, massive online open education, uh, massive online open courses. Uh, these are courses sponsored by universities and delivered online. They're tailored to be delivered online in most cases. And then th what I'm going to group is other ventures. I mean, there's probably more out there than I've got, but I've, I'm trying to be as comprehensive based on my experience as I know. So let's look at each of these in turn so you can make an informed decision. First, um, before I do that, I want to talk about the learning style for online programs. And you may not be a candidate, even if you think it's convenient. Uh, and I, I do see people who get into online and they say, this is just not for me. Uh, there, first of all, you almost always have to be heavily visual. If you're a visual learner, it will help even in an audio-oriented program because even if you have audio, you will be listening, but you will be uh, not getting the, the other senses involved. You'll be getting mostly watching the video, maybe listening, taking notes, but it is generally visual. And if you are not visual in many, many if not most programs, you are at a disadvantage. Uh, generally, these online programs require writing if you want to get credit. I don't know any program that doesn't. So if you really, really hate to write, or if you have trouble expressing yourself in writing, then this may be a barrier to you if you want credit. And this is true of any program you take. And of course, you probably know this, you have to be self-motivated. They're really what we talk about with online education is nowadays what we call asynchronous. Synchronous means that it, you're listening online while the lecture is being delivered in the classroom, and that's getting more and more rare. Maybe some television programs, but almost always it's asynchronous, which means that it is out of sync with whatever is being delivered online uh, in in the classroom. So let's say you 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 have a, a video, you have you say this is week three, you have two videos to watch and an assignment to do. 
they, that's what, no one's telling you, you know, show up at 10 o'clock for your class. You have to get there. You have to listen to the video maybe over and over and you have to do the assignment and get it in on time. W generally, there there is a, 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 a disadvantage. Psychologists have studied something called the facilitation effect, which means that when you are in the presence of other people, you are generally going to be more motivated. I mean, it's like why people go to a gym instead of working out at home. There's something about being in, uh, in around other people. The social facilitation effect, if you want to make a note of that, can be critical. And if you need that, some people do and some don't. For example, I really don't like working out at home. I love working out in the gym. I've been doing it for years and years now. Uh, and I do benefit from that effect at the gym. But when it comes to writing, I really don't have a problem. And I, I can keep to a schedule and I've written a book and published it and just by keeping to a schedule I don't have a problem with doing that but some people are the opposite so you have to decide what you are about and how you work and be very very honest with yourself now here uh, let's look at the first example of online education these are universities that have online options maybe you take a course or two online this happens let's say you're, you're at the end of your senior year of an undergrad program or an MBA program that you discover there's one course you need or you need one credit to graduate and they say look just take it online you have to pay for it you have to do the assignments but you can go home you don't have to stay on campus you don't have to live in the dorm anymore uh, if you're an undergrad at that age most people listening to this this video are not but it really means that it gives you some some flexibility so that really means that you you are in an on a uh, uh, not brick and mortar we don't say that we call it a campus-based traditional program your degree is going to be from that program and most of your courses will be taken face to face in a classroom but some will not and you will get a traditional degree from a traditional university and this is really a no-brainer it just is do you need the convenience and can you handle it with your learning style so we're not going to spend any time on this because uh, you know if, if you just know you're not the kind of person who can handle online then you need to get a coach or manage to get a classroom sometimes what you can do instead if you absolutely hate online degree online learning you can find a way to t maybe take the course at another local university closer to your work or your your home and get the credit transferred but j that's something we can uh, go into at another time but then we have universities that offer 100% online degrees and the quality varies widely this is if you want are taking notes you, or you um, are made just mental or, or mental notes or paper notes or computer notes put a star next to this because this is the area if you decide you need a degree for a career or you want one for whatever reason um the quality is going to vary enormously in um 100 online degrees uh, the benefit is going to be based on the reputation of the degree gra the degree granting university in other words if you get an uh, take uh, a 100 percent online degree from university of maryland it's been around a while and most people except university of maryland there's a program out of syracuse that was an mba program that i knew uh, knew several people who took that program it was almost entirely online but they did have meetings four times a year and those people have done very well in business but the, the what they did was those programs have a reputation uh, maybe not the same as some other programs but they definitely have a strong reputation but if you there are many online programs that are less well known that do have a good reputation in certain sectors so the problem here is you have to do your research you absolutely have to figure out what career you want and then research how you are going to go about getting what you want and whether this degree will help you from this university that's probably of all the categories I'm going to talk about this is the most important to do research it's not a quick and easy answer if you remember I just talked about the woman who thought she got a doctoral degree it turned out the university was so non prestigious it actually hurt her so this is where you can get really hurt and they tend to be less than cheap to be honest um, your massive open online educate should I really is massive open online courses MOOCs okay uh, those are becoming more and more possible uh, for many people what the way this is set up is and it's, it's very different from any either of the options I talked about because you do have a traditional high quality university that offers a course that is open to anyone 
The courses are taught by their regular faculty, but they are tailored to online delivery. In most cases, I have seen a few where they've made a video of a classroom and stuck it up there, and those usually don't work very well. The quality is uniformly pretty, pretty good. I have seen some that were duds, a few, but most of them are pretty good. I've taken quite a few on my own. Now, I take them recreationally because I already have an MBA and a PhD, and I really don't want to take any more degrees. So I, I although I sometimes will take the quizzes just to see if I'm learning. Uh, so they can be for fun. If you want to just broaden your scope of knowledge, anything from history to mathematics to science to computers, you can do this through the MOOCs. The, the advantage of MOOCs is that you're getting high quality education. And of course, the, the concern you have is, how, will these courses be counted if you are seriously considering using them as a transition to a new career. And that is just something you have to research. In some cases, you really don't need a certificate. You don't need anything. If you want to say be a programmer and you study Ruby on Rails you and you network and you find somebody who's willing to give you a try and maybe give you some assignments to demonstrate your skills, that's fine if you are self-motivated, self-disciplined and can do that. In other situations, then you really will benefit from a certificate. And this is so individual, there's no way we can go into that. Uh, usually with these these MOOCs, massive open, um, massive online open courses, um, usually auditing is free. So if you want to just listen to the lectures and do, in most cases, they even have free readings, um, there's no charge. But if you want to be certified, you almost always have to pay. And before you do that, I would say, ask yourself, why are you doing this? So some examples are Coursera. That's my personal favorite, Coursera.org. Or you can just Google Coursera. and They have many courses. They're set up in a format they of uh, videos, which can be anywhere from 10 to 30 or rarely more than 30 minutes per segment. I find it very easy because I like having courses delivered that way. And you can just go out, listen to one video after the other and then go if you want to do the reading. Sometimes it's available online. Sometimes you have to buy it or get it from the library. edX is another very, very strong open ed program. Uh, there, they, what's has happened is that universities choose. They either go with Coursera or they go with edX. So uh, University of Pennsylvania does Coursera, Harvard does edX. The format is different at edX because what they do is they give you something called courseware and that's where you're, it, it took me a while to figure it out edX out. It's not as intuitive as Coursera. But once you figure it out, it's pretty good. And what edX does uh, is they give you something called courseware and you go there and you, you just follow through. They have uh, maybe a video in one part of a segment and then it'll be followed by something for you to read online in the next segment. All, of course, um, edX also does something interesting where uh, there are their audio segments are usually very short, their audio video, I should say. And they usually print out a, a transcript right alongside. So you don't have to take notes. You can just cut and paste or just read the transcript. So you really have to decide which of these makes sense for you, what the courses are. And the style of the course can be very different because of the different educational institutions. Udacity is another online resource uh, that is actually quite good. Udacity is almost 100% technical. So if you want to learn how to create a website or program, it's usually really, really technical, not just web design, but getting in there. I mean, they really expect you to be a, a programmer. It's very good if you want to become more technical and get your skills. Um, the courses are not easy. Um, they're, uh, they really teach you how to do things, but if you stick with it, the quality can be quite high. Uh, in all of these, you, if you want to get feedback, you, they do have forums, and sometimes the instructors answer, but you can also submit assignments for what's called peer grading, and the quality of that is going to vary. So there are other ventures you can look at. Udemy, do not confuse that with Udacity. Udemy means that anyone can set up a course, but I might be doing a course there and it's sold. You pay usually a small amount. It's There are always discounts. You might go over there and look, uh, but they have more of the kind of courses that people like me offer through my marketing website. Uh, things like uh, how to create a website, how to develop your homepage, how to use Photoshop, how to use WordPress. Uh, they're not expensive and uh, they're mostly just downloadable videos with, with nothing else. So they're really more self-education. But if you want to pick up some skills that are not maybe not heavy-duty technical, but some of them are, that's a good place to check out. It's also cheaper than a lot of places. If you go to, say, um, take a, web, a, a WordPress web 
course. You might pay hundreds of dollars from a private person and it will be a lot less on Udemy. Khan Academy was the first. They, th that was established by someone who wanted to make education free. I have found it's geared more to the high school level and I don't find it as challenging as the others, but you can check it out. There are also open courses you can get anywhere. I mean, they're, they're not part of any of these organizations. They're just free form, but they're offered by universities. For example, if you go to uh, Yale, edoyc.yale.edu or just google uh, open education free courses at Yale you'll come up with this and Yale has some excellent courses now the the plus side is they're recorded verbatim from the classroom that's it they're just audio and video recordings of a professor speaking some of the material is not available because of copyright whereas with the the MOOCs of Coursera and edX and Udacity you get everything I mean if they say here's a map you see the map, but you don't hear because they, they're not allowed to show you things. They don't have permission to show them outside the classroom. So you, you may you know miss a few diagrams. I have found they're fascinating and I, their quality is almost always extremely high. Um, some of them are, are especially um, the courses in, in history, the courses in religion. Uh, there's an interesting music course. They're really, really fascinating courses. I haven't looked at all of them, but you could check them out. Now, if you want to find out other universities that offer free online courses, you can go to academicearth.org. And, and there, again, this is more like the Wild West. <laughs> you, you take a course, it's just for you. Um, Academic Earth is just a list, and that's, it's not always accurate, not always up to date, but it'll give you a start. For example, you, if you, let's say you're interested in, in early European history. You might find courses uh, from Cal Berkeley on, in, that are on YouTube. I found a couple that way. You might uh, also find courses online that when they call them online, they're not video. They just have materials for you to read on your own. You can just Google free open online university courses and that'll get you all kinds of information. There's also something called the Great Courses. Now, this is the high end. These are not free, not by any means. It used to be the teaching company. They have courses on almost any subject. The advantage of the Great Courses is that they choose their instructors very, very carefully. Um, they design the courses specifically to be delivered in an online format for adults. So you don't have, as you would with a course that is a recording of a live classroom, you don't have the professor telling, you know, the little jokes and the interruptions and then let's talk about the syllabus that you would get with, say, the Yale courses. You, you just get information that's tailored to you. They can be expensive. I bought all of mine. I have to admit I have a whole bookcase full of uh, great courses. Uh, the, I got all mine on sale. They have excellent sales and also you can get them from eBay. They don't seem to mind if you buy courses on eBay. And sometimes if you Google uh, your own public library, you can check them out from your library if you can get through them pretty quickly. Uh, they're, they're really excellent. What I recommend that you do is set your goal. Why are you doing this? I mean, is it for fun? Is it for to keep your mind active? Is it just to learn about something? Maybe you're going on a trip and you, when I went on a trip to Greece, I wanted to learn about ancient Greek history. So that's what I did. When uh, research the way each program will or will not get you there. Some programs are, you know, if you, if your goal is to change careers, then you may want to work with a program with a certificate or a program with a set of courses that is taught a certain way uh, so that you maybe you'll want to put a, a portfolio together. So that's something to think about. And you can mix and match. So let's say you're interested in a particular subject. Um, let's say I was interested in, in a certain type of history. You can look at uh, different programs in different schools. So for example, the maybe Yale had an excellent course that was very straightforward as a recording of ancient Greeks, ancient Greek history in the classics department that I really enjoyed. But I supplemented that with a course from the teaching company that was even stronger. I mean, this was just a brilliant, brilliant course. And I, I, it ended up costing me less than $50, maybe even $30, 35 because I got it on eBay. And um, I, it was really good. You could also get um, the great the great courses. They're, if you get them in the on the just the online version. They're, they're usually reasonable. They all go on sale about once a year, so you don't have to pay $500. If you see a course you like and it's, uh, it seems outrageous, just wait. It'll go on sale. Uh, so I did the I did a Yale course. I did a, a great courses, and I did a free course at Coursera. Uh, and they were all from different schools and all had different perspectives and different methods. And I ended up learning a lot and getting different perspectives. They each covered different orientations. So you have to decide what you want to do and, um, and which one will make the most 
most sense for you and your objective. You also can be aware that um, sometimes uh, the uh, courses will be offered in different formats in different places and you may discover for example that a course that seems like it's going to be a, a really good match because it's online ends up costing you more i should emphasize that as a as perhaps a, a semi-final point um one i uh, want to give an example when i was teaching full-time as a professor i had a student who told me he was going to get a doctorate and he chose one of the open the at that, that time it was an online program that admitted almost everyone to get a doctorate it did not have a particularly strong reputation but it did give him a doctorate that was accredited regionally and now there's nothing wrong with those programs for the right person but w uh, i encouraged him to go and talk to universities and say well, I get hired if I have this degree because some places would take that particular degree. And I should say that's not necessarily a knock about about 100% online doctoral programs because you'll find if you want, and this is just an example, it fits many careers. If you want to be a college professor, you'll find that that universities are very fussy about where their professors got their degrees from so it's really good to check that out and it works in other fields too. find out what your industry standards are and in this case the industry standard was not this particular school so he said well i'm going to save money because i don't have to quit my job but the problem was if he's going to have let's say a 20-year career after he gets done he was pretty young um, then the difference in the salary was huge because if he had gone to a traditional program yeah he would have had to quit his job and maybe but there would have been there are ways around it. I mean, if you, I when I work with clients, we talk about some of the surprising ways you can compensate for losing your, you know, your job and, and going to school full time. But at the same time, um, when he got out of this program, he'd be eligible for schools that paid thirty, forty thousand a, a year. I mean, or at most fifty. If he had gone to a, a traditional program in his field, he would have been making 60, 70, 80, 100,000 and have more consulting opportunities. So you can see that three or four years in of, you know, maybe not doing a job and maybe going to another school would have paid off. So those are the kinds of calculations you have to make when you're evaluating programs for career change. Of course, if you're doing it for fun, then you can do whatever you want. So here are some more resources. Um, my website uh, for careers has a lot of material on any aspect of career change. You can also work with me one-to-one -to, -one to discuss your particular situation. I have a digital download that you can buy, um, uh, which is exactly about how to choose a, a, a school, a, a back-to-school degree program. It's geared towards MBAs, but it applies to just about any kind of program. And I also have my 21 Day Extreme Career Makeover program, which has been very popular with many of my clients. So I want to thank you very much for joining me today. I want to emphasize that this is an important decision and working with a consultant, uh, maybe getting this digital download is a very small investment compared to what you could lose if you're looking to change careers with, with education. And uh, if you're doing this for fun, just think about your benefits in terms of your investment of time. Thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you again on a future video.